I think they're built at both, but after a certain amount of time, I'm just going to do my son's house. You know, I shouldn't be here because it's a ten. I could have volunteered for my siblings this year, so we are all going to start this. I'm doing Christmas, so you guys are on your own with these things. How are you doing? I worked for Dr. Walsh years and years ago, and you were a client of his. And I remember you from a long, long time ago. Those are the good things. That's right. Turkey trot? Yeah. Oh, fun. Where is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. My horse passed away probably. So, I feel like they get the food when they get the food. Years ago. Yeah. Do you still ride? Right? I mean, I think I got them, but the good problem is riding them right here. Are you still practicing? Mm -hmm. He's still a good horse. Yeah. As long as you keep it wrapped up, Katie. Yeah, yeah. 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 residents who have come by to share some information with us this evening. I uh, look forward to hearing uh, what you all had to share with us. And uh, thanks to Cheryl for getting the equine community to uh, participate tonight. If we could get started with a call of the roll, please. Sure. Chair Dodwell. I'm here. Councilmember Bertolino. Here. Councilmember Brost. Here. Councilmember Dillard. Here. Councilmember Edens. Here. Councilmember Jordan here. Councilmember Stevens. Councilmember Werther. Present. Okay. Um, do we have anyone who wants to make a motion to approve last month's minutes? Ms. Edens, a second. Mr. Bergamo, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Abstain. Okay. Mr. Bush is abstaining because he wasn't here last meeting. Great. Um, now I know we have a couple of individuals that are going to be speaking in the crowd here. I just want to open it up to anybody else who has um, specific topics that they may want to uh, talk about. Um, this is your public forum time period to talk to the committee directly. If there's something that you want to bring up with us, that would be great. If not, then we'll just keep moving on down with just the uh, agenda. Um, the first item we've got on our agenda this evening is um, Julian's um, gathered uh, some um, different businesses here in town, um, and we're going to start out with Wildwood Workspaces and have them talk a little bit about uh, their organization and what we can do to uh, assist in that. All right. Take her back. Yeah. I'll sit anywhere. <laughs> okay. And if you could introduce yourself, sir. My name is Kevin Grosnicklaus. Uh, I Grosnicklaus. own Grosnicklaus. Okay. Grosnicklaus. I won't make you all spell. Okay. Uh, Wildwood Workspaces, and I'll explain a little about that. I'm right across the road here, right at the block, in the uh, right above what used to be Table Three. Uh, okay. So exit. Yeah. Yeah, perfect. You can certainly sit. So, I have been a business owner. I, I know he sent around a little bit of information on this, but I, my company, Architect Now, is a software development company. We moved into that building mm -hmm. roughly three years ago, coming on three years. So, uh, another opportunity to lease some space came up on the second floor at the opposite end of the building, and I took it about three or four months ago, and it's been under construction and just recently finished and is open. And I'm running it as a co working space called Wild Workspaces, and mm -hmm. we have four businesses that, and, and I don't know how much you know about co-working spaces. I know there's mm -hmm. some industries, it's a very known thing and people use it, it's new to some people. So we uh, we have, basically I sublease 
desks, uh, office supplies, boardrooms, kitchen, mm -hmm. uh, internet, free printing, free coffee. I provide services to smaller uh, individuals or two, three person companies that, mm -hmm. that are of a size where they don't want to go and sign their own lease and they don't need their, you know, they're not gonna buy a building, they're not gonna go do things like that. We, we actually allow people to pay month to month. So mm -hmm. I have a guy starting on Monday who his family is coming into town and he's got young kids and he says it's the holiday season and he works from home generally uh -huh. and he just needs a couple of months out of the home uh, and he's paying for two months and that's his, <laughs> which is great. Uh, yeah. We have the space so yeah. we, I think it's, there's a need to be served for that type of thing, especially this far west. Mm -hmm. A lot of my, my, my primary company, Architect Now, which is in the tower, we're a software development company and we know a lot of the other technology people mm -hmm. here in St. Louis and there's a significant investment in the Cortex space mm -hmm. uh, down in the city at I-10 and people at Edward Jones and Microsoft mm -hmm. and they, many of those individuals work out here or live out here live and out work here. down there and they have the uh, commute that they have to put mm -hmm. up with. And most of those companies, Microsoft being a primary partner of ours, their employees are allowed to work wherever they want. Um, and out here, too far to drive in so they don't go there, they generally work from home and they're just looking for spaces. And there's many enterprises in the city and elsewhere that will actually mm -hmm. cover the cost of a co-working space. So mm -hmm. um, one of my first four customers thus far, like I said, we're new, they're, the amount they're paying me for that desk is being paid actually by their company just to give them somewhere where it's cheaper for them to pay me for this desk out here than it is to, to for the real estate or whatever the yeah, space in uh -huh, their, their corporate uh -huh. building. So. That's a, that's a brief summary. Any any mm -hmm. questions about what we do or what we? Yes. Yes. Uh, you, know, first of all, how did you uh, how did you market yourself? How did you get the word out that this space was going to be available? Okay. That's and kind then, of the we were just starting there. So, mm -hmm. oh, okay. but I'm glad to answer. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go. That was the first question. Uh, we I work in IT, so we're very good. I always say very good. We're very familiar with companies that do social media marketing. Um, we have plans in the in the near future in January, February to do, you know, the West County News, things of that nature, where there'll be more print. Um, marketing this type of business is slightly different than my other business, where it's you know we build, we work for Walmart and Walgreens and Boeing and you know huge companies pay us to build mobile apps. Uh, that company isn't really advertised in a magazine or, or print or stuff like that. Those people know you through other channels. Um, I'm really looking to get the word out. So far, the Wildwood Business Association has been great. Working with other local business owners, they've shared information on their social media pages and emails. We've done a lot of just local networking events. The chamber, mm -hmm. we're heavily involved in the chamber, so uh, joined the chamber as two businesses, handing out cards. So it's really been word of mouth here in Wildwood, just mm -hmm. knocking on doors and being involved in networking events. But we're at the tip of the iceberg. We've only had customers for a month and a half, so mm -hmm. I don't have a year to look back on and say this is what's successful and this is what's not. But, mm -hmm. So. Yeah, just follow up, how many spaces do you have and what's your capacity for that? Uh, we have two different types of spaces. We have dedicated desks, which are 60 inch by 42 with 32 inch HD monitors and storage. And when I say a dedicated desk, people pay, I mean, just to be, the, uh, the pricing is $350 a month for one of those, and that gets you free internet, coffee, 24 seven access. Uh, those desks, we have 16. And then we have, ultimately, when some of the final furniture is delivered, we're going to have about 25 what we call hot desks. Mm -hmm. More like uh, the competitor to something like this would be people that just go sit at Starbucks and sit in the window at Starbucks, right? Mm -hmm. And they just sit and pay for Starbucks all day, and they have their you know tabletop bar stool, and they mm -hmm. break out their laptop. Mm -hmm. We'll have about 25 of those, and the cost for those is $250 a month. Mm -hmm. You get access to the same amenities, but by calling it a hot desk, you just can't. It's likely that if you sit here today, somebody might meet you there tomorrow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to sit somewhere else, but we only sell the number of desks that we have. Mm -hmm. Good. Thank you. Yeah. So I'm seeing you've defined your business not only as the co-working space, but also as the as a business incubator. So I was wondering, um, do you offer resources as an incubator? For example, I have a, a friend that started a tech company and was part yep. of Y Combinator out in Silicon yep. Valley, and so what helped him was access to attorneys, <coughs> trademarking, licensing, and other so we're not as formal as that, but we do, so far, I mean, just started, uh, my other company right at the hall, mm -hmm. and, and first off, one other thing we're pointing out about while we're space is we have no full-time employees. Mm -hmm. So since we're located about, you know, 50 yards apart, mm -hmm. um, and the, the, the facility has remote access, you basically, when you sign up, you get an account, it's all ran, I mean, it's pretty high tech for the most part. You, you have an app on your phone that you log into, and you walk up to the door, hold your phone up, and if you're within three feet of the door, the door unlocks, and if you don't pay next month, it turns off. So there's 
uh, we give that type of stuff. We, my company, Architect Now, if somebody needs something, we can come help them. We're right there. Right. But we also do, some, we help small businesses set up their, their internet. We help people do Office 365 or Microsoft Partner. Mm -hmm. We do a lot of setup in the, the small business IT. We have a very big network here in town just through all our other customers of attorneys, accountants. So we're not as formal as a Y Combinator or anything mm -hmm. downtown sure, yeah. like mm -hmm. Arch Grants or Capital Innovators. We're not providing funding or doing any of that. Mm -hmm. We're trying to build a network of these small businesses and say, hey, if you need a couple addresses of attorneys, and, and it's just like, you know, Wild Wood Business Association sharing mm -hmm. information about who's here and who would we recommend and who have we seen had some mm -hmm. sex, success with companies your size, yeah. we're providing those kind of services. Okay, and are you um, in contact with the Mizzou Incubator Program? I have been with other customers, but not necessarily. We're not trying to incubate. I don't want to go as far as saying we're incubating startups. Right. These are okay. existing employed. Mm -hmm. Some of ours are not businesses at all. They're just, they work for Edward Jones, and mm -hmm. Edward Jones says, don't come in sure. other more than of, Monday. More of the co-working. Co-working. We're pure co-working. Co I wasn't yeah. sure if you were progressing towards no, it. It may be. Yeah. Um, it's been kind of fascinating thus far to see the network, even with, I've only got you know, five people over there in a month and a half. Mm -hmm. But they go to happy hours, and they've <laughs> shared information, and they've, you know, one has passed on information on their account to the other, so there's been a lot of, mm -hmm. yeah. without me being involved at all, mm -hmm. there's similar interests of companies that size. Yeah, mm -hmm. so we're, I'm just trying to facilitate and say, mm -hmm. you know, and we, we've got a very cool portal when they sign up, like they, it's all automated payment, automated access, but we also have a directory of all the businesses here in Wildwood Town Center. We entered all the information for every, and at some point I'd like to go around, I have not done this yet, mm -hmm. to the various and say, hey, I've got X number of people that work over here. Is there anything we could do to partner where you could host events or provide some type of discounts? Or what could I do to take the people that are working in my space and drive them towards your business? Yeah. So we've got a directory right now that lists every restaurant, every shop, you name it, all the grocery stores that have phone numbers, access directions, and all of my customers thus far have accessed all that in its front and center. I'm using it as a market. I, I love this area out here. I, I, while I'm new to this space as a business owner in the last three years and with this company a few months, I live over at Old State right on the border of Wildwood. Mm -hmm. And my company for eight years was located up off Manchester in Ellisville, right in the uh, the old Bremen Bank building mm -hmm. and the American mm -hmm. Family mm -hmm. building up there. So we moved out here and this space has been great for me to attract employees as well as this type of customer. Mm -hmm. So I'm really pushing the amenities that you have within walking distance. If you don't like our free coffee, walk to Starbucks. <laughs> now, can you describe a little bit about what Architect Now does as well? I mean, I know we've we brought you in here to talk about oh, work with workspaces, but maybe kind of give us Architect a Now. We are a software developer. We are, we do software architecture. We build mobile apps and, and large complex web apps for our customers. Range from startups that get some funding and might be two employees and an idea, and maybe a mobile app sketched on a napkin, mm -hmm. all the way up to we do work for. I was spent the day at WashU. We do, we're helping WashU with a major transformation. Uh, Walmart's one of our bigger customers. We spend a lot of time down in Bentonville. Uh, sometimes our customers are regional, where they're in the San Luis area. We've got customers from Rhode Island to Santa Rosa, California, to San Diego right now. So we work in, we work nationally. Mm -hmm. uh, people hire us. We build. We work kind of like a law firm. We bill hourly, but uh, we take on projects for people. So they say, I need this built. We tell them. You know, based on our expertise, we estimate this is going to be six months and cost you this much money and we will build them an app and do the work. We help them monitor it. We're a Microsoft partner. We host in the cloud. So we're very, we're a group. I have 15 developers over here. I'm just saying, very technological, very mm -hmm. hardcore. We're geeks that sit around and do virtual reality, do artificial intelligence and all the stuff that you read about. That's what we do there. And, and at the beginning of the Wild Workspaces, and, and Julian knows this, that building has been mostly empty on the upper floor for many years. Yes. Uh, so when I leased, uh, we took over my, a prior customer of Architect Now was in that tower and they went out of business and I took over their space very quickly because I wanted that space. Mm -hmm. But the rest of that side of the building was open. Um, the landlord made some decisions and leased it very quickly. In a matter of months, they leased the rest of that building. Mm -hmm. uh, so I took over the two suites that are now Wildwood Workspaces to some degree to squat on them because Architect Now is out of space. So mm -hmm. I also use Wilder Workspaces for my own Architect Now employees. We have somewhere to go, we have extra meeting rooms, extra seats. Mm -hmm. So there'll be a mix of just yeah. businesses and then there'll be, you know, people over in this corner might be Architect Now employees that I'm just giving access yeah. to that space. If you have a specific project and you bring yeah. 
My customers Eventually. like it. Mm -hmm. for our, the Architect Now customers who partner with us, they come out and they just say, hey, I want to work here for a couple of days. Mm -hmm. We have somewhere to go okay. set up. So they like that as well. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, mm -hmm. what kinds of things can the City of Wildwood continue to help you with? Sounds like you're moving in lightning speed. I mean, honestly, uh, nothing. I mean, I'm sure if something comes up, I know I have. I mean, especially with Julian, we talk a lot. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I spent eight years in Ellisville, and I had nothing like the support that I've had in the city. I moved out here, and within a day, while the people were sitting down, I've been involved in the business association and a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. So I feel that if something does come up, all I have to do is raise my hand, and I would get a resource like that. But so far, Everybody's creep growing the area out here. I mean, bring in more businesses, yeah. right? Bring in more homes, build more subdivisions. That's what you can do. The more people out here that work in the city, the better for me. So just keep doing what you're doing, and, and everything will be great on my end. Well, we do have some some arms around where we build what you see oh, yeah. right here in town center. So um, we can't. We're not going to do creeping out beyond our town center's gate for um, oh, heavy right. development, but. Um, we really appreciate having you bring your business into Wildwood. I'm glad you did. It's such a wonderful success. And for Wildwood workspaces, my audience of people are really neighbors, people who live out here. Yeah. That don't want to drive somewhere else. So nobody's going to drive from the city out here to work there. No. But on the flip side, Architect Now, I've got 15 developers that are, you know, we, that we I work in the high-tech industry where salaries are very high. Yeah. So I, I'm bringing a lot of people in from out of state. I just had an employee move from Huntsville, Alabama. A bunch mm -hmm. moved over here from Illinois. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people are moving to this area, and yeah. it's been a big selling point. They come out here and look around, and they see the, you know, the amenities and the houses and mm -hmm. where it is and school districts and school all of that. So it's been a, a good draw. There's a lot of people that I will hire that you know, I can make an offer to, but they're like, that's far west. I don't know <laughs> yeah. if I want to move out there, and then they come out and Mm -hmm. And I've built up a small network of real estate agents and bankers, and mm -hmm. you know, just because some of these people are so new to the area, they don't know. They don't even know what to. Yeah. What to go to. So I've yeah. given tours of schools. Schools. <laughs> it's, it's been interesting, but it's the, the area is drawn some very good talent, and they've well, loved it when they've been out here. So. I appreciate your efforts, and uh, I know the city does too. Uh, Thank you for uh, what you're doing. This. I used to be an IT director, so I understand the kinds of people that you're working right. with, and you have to uh, you have to coddle them a little bit so that you get good performance out of them, and uh, giving them a great place to work and a great atmosphere after work uh, to be able to get out and away from that keyboard and stretch some legs and feel some sunshine. It's always good. Their only complaint thus far is not one of them can move past 109. So uh, they work from home two days a week, and the internet's so slow, no one can work. So yeah. it's just the boundary that they could move. Yeah, so they know that, they've tried, they've looked at houses, yeah, and that's been a showstopper, and they've moved. I've got a few that moved to Chesterfield, moved to other places mm -hmm. just because of the internet access. Mm -hmm. So, And we're in a high-tech industry where we allow them to work from home, mm -hmm. but if they can't, they can't. So mm -hmm. they have to come into the office, so that's yeah. a showstopper. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That, is, that is definitely. Yep. We need to fix that. Continue working on it. <laughs> I know it's a hard thing to fix, but yeah. yeah. It's on the list. <laughs> Unfortunately, we're not the providers of set Oh, I know. So that makes it a little difficult. And, and I work with question. people, but that's their first question. They could care less about the house. They could care less yeah, about yeah. They're yeah. literally, what how fast the is the internet? Mm -hmm. so. But the difference is between those houses, I mean, what's your internet speed at the office? A gig? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So. Here at the office, for very little money, I get a blazing fast internet. Well, mm -hmm. that's part of the sell for all the workspaces is these mm -hmm. people can't get that internet that, and we have boardrooms with you know teleconferencing systems so they can go sit down with mm -hmm. 65 inch TVs and cameras and stream over fast internet mm -hmm. so part of me says if you get fast internet past 109 while the workspaces is I'm going to do as well because those are my customers because mm -hmm. they can't do it from home they have to come in and work at while the workspaces so I'm playing that you know, as long as I can so take your time on one hand <laughs> 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 well, I made sure to note that I think the intent is that it's tech focused as well as more focused on the IT space, the, the mm -hmm. architects, the, uh, the IT based professionals. It's not meant to compete or replace the coffee shop mm -hmm. atmosphere. Mm -hmm. It's not meant to be a Starbucks. It's not meant to be a, a, a coffee shop type of mm -hmm. environment. It's meant mm -hmm. to be tech focused with that kind of. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking to build a community a small bit. Of the first five people, three of them are software developed randomly. I, other yeah. than saying tech focused on the site, it, it could work for any. If you have inventory, there's certain companies this wouldn't work for. If you've got, if you need like a small warehouse of inventory, yeah, or, wouldn't you, you wouldn't work. It's really people that could walk in with a laptop, 
-hmm. and do their work very remotely. If you could work at Starbucks, you could work here. Mm -hmm. um, if you need your garage to hold, you've got crafts or bins full of stuff for your business, it's probably not a good mm -hmm. fit for you. Mm -hmm. so. yeah, you don't have a warehouse space to Yeah, even though the first, one of my first tenants is a small traditional architectural firm, and they do have a little section I gave them for samples of carpet. <laughs> 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 I don't think that would work at scale. I couldn't do 30 people bringing in their samples no. of carpet. Yeah. Yeah. That would be a little bit helpful. Yeah. Any other questions you have for us? In I don't. Thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. And for if anyone in. has any questions, <coughs> sure. hopefully I'm not too hard to find. Well, good workspaces. Mm -hmm. You didn't bring your business card. I do have business cards. <laughs> in my code. If you want a card, glad to have Sure, pass them out. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Pass out the cards, guys. I'll leave some with Julian and he can make sure you all get them when he leaves. Thanks for taking his time. Oh, no problem. And then Councilmember Jordan has <laughs> been in communication with several of our equestrian um, entities in town. We kind of started discussing things, ladies and gentlemen, and realized that we really hadn't done much at all um, with. Um, interacting with the equestrian community and so we look forward to the opportunity to hear what you have to say this evening. Right, yeah, there's several fine folks that came in to talk and I guess in terms of order of getting here, you want to get step forward, Lulu and Terry first and I'll pass this information out. Oops. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to find that thing. Thank you. Can they come up and sit? Yeah. yeah, they can certainly come up here and sit. Yeah. You want to sit here? It doesn't matter. Yeah, come up. Yeah, please. Uh, it's yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to stand up here. It's not a horse. It's not a horse. It's that old knee that just. It's an old knee that has yeah. uh, reached her face. Yeah. 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 It's an old knee that has reached her face. It's the humidity outside. That's right. So my name is Lulu Bell. I'm the executive director of Equine Assisted Therapy. Yeah. 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 Y
Um, we have a, we've handed out a few of um, our brochures as far as what we do and one of the ways that we are also really trying to get into um, the community is um, we are doing a new program called Boots in the Barn mm -hmm. and it's for any uh, first responders or uh, veterans who um, not so much are looking for a place to come and get therapy but are looking for a place to just come and de-stress. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they have um, very stressful um, positions and their schedules are often varied and so what we're talking about doing is, is doing this once a month at different times um, to accommodate the schedules whether they're retired or not retired or working on Wednesdays but you know every third Wednesday or however that works but giving them an outlet to come and uh, see the different ways that they can participate in what we do at equine assisted therapy and um, get them familiar with the benefits of horses um, you know full circle mm -hmm. um, not just from the riding component but just being around them and um, the stress relief that comes from being with them mm -hmm. as well as maybe potentially becoming a volunteer which might be an outlet of stress for them mm -hmm. um, maybe you know volunteering some time maybe they just want to come and, and pull weeds or something for us as well so um, that was one new thing that we're doing and we have sent our brochures to all the local uh, police and fire departments um, we reached out to some of the local BFWs and um, those sort of um, organizations as well. And um, we were just excited for, for Cheryl to invite us here tonight and talk a little bit about what we do and hear everybody else's ideas on how we can uh, keep the equestrians here in Wildwood and, and active. So I have a couple questions for you, Lily. Sure. Um, Appreciate you talking a little bit about what you all do over there. Are there any particular ways that, you know, I know you mentioned you have a place that's in town center still, and um, I know you serve more than just the Wildwood City area. We do, yes. Do you have any programs that you've done with other cities that you think is or something maybe we might want to try in Wildwood to, you know, be supportive or, or pu you know, provide right. pu publicity? Yeah. <laughs> We, um, for the city of town and country, we did actually offer, uh, we do some team building as well, and we offer that to different corporates or different groups that want to come in, scout groups. We had the Eureka football team down for team building activities. Um, so that is, that is one way, um, not necessarily even in other cities, but other areas coming to us as well. Um, we have worked with Keller Williams Realty out of, out of Sunset Hills, uh, brings a group down every year. Um, Bosch and Lom brings a group in every year. So we are bringing other people to Wildwood as well, as you said. With the city of town and country, we just um, invited all of their city administrators. We had city administrators, fire chief, police chief, um, a, but a handful of aldermen, um, a couple of parks and recreation uh, workers mm -hmm. and invited them to see what our equine assisted learning program and team building program is all about and they liked it so much they're actually including it in their town and country parks and recreation uh, brochure coming up here um, in spring of 2020. Mm -hmm. So um, that's something that we would absolutely love to join forces with the city of Wildwood and, and see if there are um, any opportunities for that mm -hmm. and uh, we are right now um, the only equine therapy program in St. Louis County. So because of that, we have um, we have participants that come from all over St. Louis. Um, and Illinois. And, and Illinois, <laughs> yes. So um, so we are, um, you know, just, just in our everyday operations bringing people into the city of Wildwood um, on a daily basis. So um, this um, new Boots in the Barn open house mm -hmm. uh, or program that you're starting sounds really interesting. Well, is it all centered around kind of like the hanging out at the barn, volunteering at the barn, or is there also writing programs there, for those folks? So or? what we are looking to do is we, uh, we just went through a training out in Colorado um, about how to reach out to more veterans and, and first responders because it seems to be, um, um, it seems to be an area that is, um, a little touchy as far as um, a stigma for these right. professions asking for help and so mm -hmm. to use the word therapy sometimes just automatically closes the door for them so we um, we took this uh, we, we came up with this boots in the barn program and what we're hoping to do is um, is offer them 
a few different stations where they can get a taste of what it might feel like to ride a horse and maybe that's an outlet for them. Um, they will get an opportunity to see what it's like to be a volunteer with some of the people who ride at our facility and that might be a nice um, outlet for them. Uh, as well as learning some horsemanship skills and just learning about horses in general. Um, sort of like their profession might come with a stigma when they ask for help. Horses also sometimes come with a stigma. You know, these are very big, large animals. People might be afraid of them. The liability that is um, at, that, that we uh, have at risk, you know, for doing any of these programs. And so the more that we feel that we can educate um, these folks or anybody really about um, the magic of horses and the calmness of horses and all of the different um, good things that come from horses versus just riding. Um, we are so excited to to share that with with other individuals and corporations and, and um, Incorporated in many different ways versus just a riding, you know that you just ride horses And this is a question. I think Sam um, or, or Julian or there's others from the city in here as well, but I'm curious as a city, are we able to assist with providing some publicity about this program that's available? I mean, is this something that could be put on our website? To, I mean, I think it's a fabulous service for, mm -hmm. you know, people that are really important to, you know, the, the city and each of us individually, right, that may count on them at some point in time. And I think it'd be awesome to be able to give some support in that we, way if it's legal. And we had talked when Julian and Lauren and I were kind of brainstorming about yeah. businesses that maybe we hadn't been touching here in the city of Wildwood, and obviously you guys came up. And one of the thoughts was, a lot of people don't know horses. Right. And would it be um, possible at some of our events that we have that you bring in a horse or two and just let people touch the horse? Yeah. or? feed the horse by hand or mm -hmm. something. I mean, they're very imposing. I, I had a 17-hand Arabian as a young girl, but um, it brought a lot of joy to me. So I, I know what right. you're talking about as far as um, the catharsis that an individual can go through when they are um, exposed to many kinds of animals. Mm -hmm. um, and so we were trying to think as a committee as the whole, how do, how do we bring in the equine community so that we've got a lot of people that are moving into this town center area mm -hmm. that aren't experienced in broader farmland Absolutely. kinds of environments that we certainly, all of us here, want to keep. So um, Yes, we would love. We would, we would love to work with you guys on that and, mm -hmm. and, and see um, again, there's always a lot of a liability when we right. bring a large yes. animal like yes. this into. Um, mm -hmm. But we we would certainly be open to discussions about this mm -hmm. and or um, you know when when there are uh, citywide activities going on at mm -hmm. least opening our gates. We're three miles down the road from yes. city center mm -hmm. um, to uh, bring that awareness to more people uh, uh, about horses. But we're. You know, I'm not saying that we can't bring the horses either, no, we, I mean, but we could You would know better what to do. Yeah, we, could, we would love to open up discussions about that. Would it require a motion from me for us to, you know, put some information on the website, particularly about, you know, the Boots in the Barn program that they've, you know, new program that's being introduced and maybe a little bit about how, you know, they can be of service to, you know, people in the city who might have family members or themselves that are mentally, emotionally, and the things that they mentioned. Would, would emotion help with that, or how do I we move forward and take an action? I think our social media channels are probably going to be more effective mm -hmm. at getting the word out about these types of events. Uh, mm -hmm. Historically, cities, and I think Wildwood is included, we tend to shy away from promoting businesses, even nonprofit businesses sure. on our website, just because of, of certain exposures that uh, mm -hmm. you know, certain risks that expose the cities to but I think social media channels are a great opportunity for that and we regularly do that um, we've used our Facebook um, mm -hmm. our weekly e newsletter to share activities events from our local business community on a regular basis mm -hmm. um, they used to host or might still the, the hoedown the last hoedown mm -hmm. each year mm -hmm. and we included that promotional material brochure in our welcome packets that we sent out to new residents every month um, that, that's part of the ongoing support for a business community helping share activities. Um, so we do that regularly on an ongoing basis, but if there is new information, we always ask for that so we can share yeah, that. Yeah, we can certainly share that. So then, Julian, you would be the one that would go to put 
I try and encourage that on our social media channel. Yes. Yeah, I would we have a social media team. Yeah. We would take the flyer and pass it on to Joe to spearhead the e-newsletter part of it. Um, to get a copy. <laughs> we also had a volunteer training day. We were doing those every couple of months mm -hmm. where we would just put people who maybe have a little time in their schedules who would like to connect with other people their own age and or students wanting to look into equine mm -hmm. therapy as a major. Mm -hmm. And it also helps connect some of the health uh, care community with us because we are a very big part of their, mm -hmm. what are you going to say? Uh, we have progress. Progress, <laughs> yes. Yeah, and, and so they are coming from all over. We have the Alzheimer's, we have the cancer mm -hmm. um, support groups, and different groups like that that come to because we're one of many different things that they do with their people. Yeah. So, you know, we wanted to get the word out about the volunteer because then we can talk to them about yeah. all the different things we have to offer. So I think it's a fabulous program. So I, I personally think anything that we can do to let the residents know that this jewel of a resource is just right within mm -hmm. our city. Mm -hmm. Um, because Tennessee is a sure. Lulu, yeah. sure. um, can you put you on the spot? Can you speak for the greater equine area here too? Um, not just your barn and your work, but our our discussions up to this point was we recognize that there's a huge group of, of horse people sitting out there <laughs> who, who, in here right here who we've never felt. You know, integrated into Wildwood. And Tim, don't don't take offense, but we. I must say, why why I say that? Because you're a you're a horse. So historically, we well, sure. it doesn't feel like we've ever pulled in the equine or the horse ownership right. uh, community in some way. Okay, and I don't know what that was. Well, that was that was never intentional, I'm sure. But it was never also was never probably any steps that the city had taken in the past. To reach out to that whole community right. and say, you know, you're, you're part of our community. We're part of your community. Right. What can we do to to, to integrate you with us and us yes. with you so that we are one community? And we thought of things like, you know, like we just mentioned, why isn't there an event? Why isn't there a citywide event mm -hmm. that recognizes the, the equine industry? Okay. Um, we, as you say, we have bike rides and we have trail rides, but we have not done nothing for the the horse ownership, okay, and you ask, there's some problems with that, but we've never really attacked it. Right, okay? right. There's also, um, and, and I hope I'm not talking out of school, but I have friends who said that the equine community is also somewhat leery of the city, okay, that, as you said, don't sell off the land. Well, that's what we worry, about, and I didn't mean that offensively at all, but as, as obviously if, if you have horses of your own and you keep seeing all this building, you start to think, okay, when are they coming after my property <laughs> yeah. next? And, and, and we're not. The city never has and never will. Right. Mm -hmm. But again, if that is a, a, a mindset out there that says, you've got to watch the city there, we're going to try and take it, then we've got to get over that. Right. And I, I'm glad you heard that the guy today, the, uh, Kevin, who was here, talk about his relationship with the Wildwood Business Association, mm -hmm. okay? Because when I came on council, and, and, and Tim had tested this, Tim started a, a task force that said, we've got to build this relationship with the, I mean, it's like zero, okay, our relationship with the business community, okay? And we started as a task force, and it grew into a, mm -hmm. a, this committee, basically, okay? And you heard him talk about the relationship that this new owner had yes. with the business association, with, with uh, Julian and so on. And that's all occurred over the last few years. But I think because the city took the initiative to get out there and say, we want to be a part of you. We want you to, we want to support mm -hmm. you. Mm -hmm. And now the WBA is a very, very active mm -hmm. group. I think all the business owners around town feel connected and they feel connected with the city. Okay, and we'd like to have that same relationship with the equestrians. I, yes, okay. I agree. And I just spoke to one of our volunteers just last night who um, is, is um, involved in our city and has horses. And, and to your point, that's exactly what she said. It almost seems as though I was asking her opinion about this and, and telling her I was coming to this meeting. And, and that's what she said. There's a disconnect. For some reason, there's, there's a disconnect. And we need to figure out what that disconnect is and how to make it better. As a, as a new professional um, in the equine business and in the city of Wildwood, because um, I've been with equine assisted therapy for eight years, but just taking over, um, I didn't even realize we were not a part of the Wildwood Business Association. Um, so we, we have recently joined, and I, I think, um, you know, hopefully, more equestrian uh, businesses in the area will do that if they if they haven't already and and maybe it just takes a couple of us stepping up and and saying you know yeah let's 
let's break down whatever this communication, I'm not saying for sure that there is, but let's break down this wall and let's start working together and seeing how we can build all of this. Um, and, and do you have recommendations? Do you, have, you know people <coughs> working with Cheryl? Can we yes. can start pulling a group together? Yes, I think so I gave have her, who's gonna uh, kind of yeah. okay, cool. and I gave, her, I gave her a list and I'll be happy to share that again with, with many equine businesses. Um, Terry uh, also went out on online for us and we looked at other communities and um, I, I, I made some notes if you want to hear them, Please. if this is the right time. Um, so uh, first of all, um, a, a lot of this was taken um, by um, a, 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 a news magazine called Equine Land Conservation. Um, and one of the things that it talked about is looking at the many benefits that horses bring into communities economically. Um, mm -hmm. And um, it's not just the economic, but it's the ecological effect that we get from the horses, and it's also the aesthetic effect that it brings to our communities. I mean, people love to drive down 109 and see the horses on the side of the road. Mm -hmm. And especially as we are growing um, with homes, um, to, to drive literally three miles from uh, subdivision after subdivision, and then all of a sudden you break out into the space where there's horses on the side of the road. I, I mean, yes, I'm a horse crazy person, but I hear so many people talk about how beautiful it is, and they, they love to drive 109 and some of the other roads because they get to see the horses. So I think the aesthetic part of it is, is huge for our, our city as well. Um, some of... Uh, some of the resources that come from us having horses, you know, the different the different feed companies that are coming in and out to other businesses in our area, West County Feed, um, we try to use them as much as possible. Right down the road, we have Mana Pro, who is one of the largest feed um, distributors for not just equines, but but many uh, Mana Pro. They're down in Chesterfield Valley, mm -hmm. um, but but they're right here, right in our backyard. Mm -hmm. And and to think about the business that Mana Pro could be bringing into our community as well, um, the veterinarians obviously that are coming and going through our community. Um, so there's so many other economic resources that come from having the horses in the community um, versus just, you know, homeowners keeping horses in, in their own pasture. Um, again, this, the scenic addition to any community, um, but that also comes with a price. We need the land mm -hmm. to be able to support having the horses here. And um, obviously houses are probably going to bring in more tax dollars um, versus open land, but that's a that's a that this is where we all need to come together and, and figure out the best of, of both worlds. Um, there was a census study done from 2007 to 2012 that say that um, every decade horses are pretty much decreasing, uh, farms are decreasing, horse farms are decreasing in the U.S. by 14 percent um, in each decade in each. Um, new census forum and the horse population in general is down by 11 percent each decade and so as a horse owner you know obviously i don't like to see those those statistics but um you know here this they've done the research to to show this and it just says that you know much of this is just uh due to poorly planned and uncontrolled population growth and we're we're going to grow there's going to be population growth, and as a city, we want that. But again, just coming together economically and, and figuring out ways that we can have both and what an asset that can be um, to our community. Um, so just really trying to incorporate horses into the planned areas um, where they're at, um, advertising the fact that we are such a wonderful city that we get to have both of these, you know, Suburbs right mm -hmm. here, but yet we also right down the road have these these wonderful horse um, mm -hmm. areas um, so This gave us seven steps to planning equine friendly communities, and I'll just run them off really quick um, knowing your equine community um, both from the business side um, the uh, city administrative side and um, you know, just, just the people who maybe aren't in the business side of it, but have horses in your community. And, and, and opening up those relationships and building connections instead of having the horse people maybe feel like, oh, we're not wanted here anymore. And I, I'm not saying that's the case. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm just, just talking about, um, you know, the different feelings that I think we get from the different groups. Um, developing and maintaining um, equally, um, 
friendly and population friendly equestrian areas. Again, we are so blessed to have Babbler and Greensfelder right here in our backyards. Um, even though sometimes people will tell you the bikers are taking over those two beautiful equestrian <laughs> parks. But um, again, it's all about breaking down barriers and communicating and figuring out a way that we can all be there together because it is possible. It definitely is, is possible. Um, but understanding as a community that if we're going to have horses, we need the land for it and yet we also need the availability to trails and exercise and those sorts of activities for our horses as well. Um, Protecting the architectural lands, uh, land development is, is another one. Um, making sure that we have grazing opportunities for our horses. Um, yes, we can keep them on hay, but it's a much healthier horse when they're able to move and to graze. In the wild, the average horse will move 16 to 20, 25 miles a day. So when you think about the limitations that we're putting on our horses by having them in confinement, um, there's just something to be said by that. Um, develop, developing um, appropriate codes and ordinances for us all to get along. You know, realizing that if you're going to build a subdivision right next to an area that has three acre home sites already that allows horses, that the people who are buying the new houses aren't going to be complaining of the horse poop that technically was there first. Of course, when you were, I should say. So again, building relationships and, and realizing that, you know, yeah, that's great. You want to live in a subdivision and you want it to be right next to our horse community, but there are cause and effects here and, and how can we handle all of those. Enhancing public awareness, which is something that we would really like to do. Um, really teaching people about horse safety, why we have signs on our fences that say, please don't feed the horses. We're not trying to be mean. We want you to come and see our horses, but many of them are on special diets, and there's reasons for that. Um, so increasing public awareness about the safety of horses and um, incorporating all of our existing facilities. This is the last one. So coming together with all of our different equine groups and um, coming together with our, with our city, as you said, you know, why, why aren't we seeing um, equine tents at some of our, mm -hmm. our Wildwood festivals and mm -hmm. that is something that Terry and I certainly talked about. We were actually hoping to get into the barbecue bash and it was the week right before our big event and mm -hmm. you know schedules yeah. just um, didn't coincide but um, absolutely incorporating all of our facilities into mm -hmm. the community and, and trying to just um, just everybody work together and build relationships on both sides. So this was that was just a little bit of the homework that we did. I hope I didn't bore you with all of that. But um, you know, we like being here. We love the area that we're in, and we would love to to really help to give back to Wildwood and vice versa. So we invite all of you guys to come down for a team building. Um, it's really it's really fun to see mayors and aldermen and police chiefs and fire uh, folks and 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 park recreation people come together and, and try to get through obstacles with a horse. It's not done on the horse, just so you all know, it's all done groundwork. But that's the other thing, is just incorporating the fact that just being around the horses gives us so many benefits. It's not necessarily about the riding. There's so many other ways that we can learn and um, really benefit from, from being around these absolutely wonderful animals. Our youngest rider is two, our oldest is 90. Mm -hmm. And we serve 125 to 130 riders every week, plus different groups that we have out. So we're bringing a lot of people into the city and showing them the good things about Wildwood, too. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate y'all coming. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you just some text? I'm just going to add one quick thing. The only thing you forgot to say was we have about five, I'm a volunteer person, so of course I've got to <laughs> she has, she has But we have about 500 volunteers that come to help us during the course of the year. That's people coming from everywhere. Wildwood everywhere. We have people coming across the river. So we have people who drive an hour or more to get to us, Farmington and other places, mm -hmm. because they just want to be where the horses are. Yeah. And they want to be with other people like them. And the population of people who volunteer with us is so diverse. We have the kids, you know, our, our insurance allows us to work with volunteers who are 14 and above. Mm -hmm. So we don't do events for little kids, but we do have um, kids coming from high school and college who have mm -hmm. service hours and they're trying to focus on something relating to therapy for a college major. Okay. Then we also have um, our young local people who are just want to get out of the business thing mm -hmm. and do something fun outside in the country. Mm -hmm. And they come and they volunteer with us for a week or so. We have the moms and dads who want to be a big example to their teenagers as they're starting to think about future. And then we have our retired population who have the time <coughs> and you know want to give back. 
Mm -hmm. uh, it's just, it's amazing. There isn't one particular population group that we miss. Mm -hmm. We have writers who are disabled, we have seniors, and we have, um, uh, we have our veterans, so. Is the whole population just on the board? Are you done, David? Yeah. Okay. So, um, do you have any extra copies of these? Yes. 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 So that's another yeah. first and, and we can print some. And I can, if you guys give me, is it Julian that I need to contact yeah. as far as getting things on the website? We'll, we can put it up there. But perfect. I so I have some resources for you guys for, to meet up with some oh, other wonderful. veterans groups. And I didn't know if you were aware, but the West St. Louis Chamber of Commerce, the second Wednesday of each month. Has, yes. We do you go to that? We we went to I think two orders. meetings, and then um, fall is such a crazy time of the year for us. Mm -hmm. Between our Wildwood and our Town and Country facility, just, I've not been, mm -hmm. but um, but yes, we are a part of that. And um, I sent an email actually okay. over to Lori about this. I've not heard back from her yet, um, but we can certainly get you all of our, our trainings and, and that sort of stuff to, to get it up yeah. on at least the Facebook page or something like that. Um, we're participating in the, the snowman, so that might bring um, some people in as well. Really and cool snowman, I'm sorry? Really cool snowman. Uh, thanks. <laughs> it's actually just a horse, right, with a hat. <laughs> um, yeah, he's, sitting, he's riding the horse. He's, he's riding the horse. Oh, and, and, and so, um, so yeah, so so we would yeah we we so, just started offering um, services to different assisted living centers. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple from Don Enrica in Eureka coming in, where they bring um, the residents up <coughs> once a month, um, and then we're looking to reach out to Stonecrest here. So there's mm -hmm. um, many other. We it's we're not uh, focused to any one specific group. You know, our our right. main uh, program is our therapy program. But as long as it fits into our mission, and, and mm -hmm. most everybody does, we can we can work with just about any any group. So. And and David, I Dave and I had come up with some ideas, and I really appreciate appreciate Cheryl for kind of stepping up as a liaison. But some of the things that we had talked about is you know what would it look like to have a giant horse event that was either centered around something that was sportsmanship like, like a polo match? What if it was a seen and be seen event where people wore derby hats and so they'd want to come to be seen and then learn about the horses? What would it look like if it was a parade or we featured veterinarians and a science field trip? And one of the things that, um, you know, when I've been on horses, it's always been tourism related. And so I feel like for me, I'm interested in horses, but there's a little bit of a disconnect because I'm not a horse owner and that's a big startup cost and I don't have three acres. So I think there's a lot of individuals that would, would like to experience horses, but maybe don't need the therapy right. program and would like to go beyond um, not just seeing them at an event, but maybe paying a day rate or, and, and I think that there's a, a huge bridge there because in order for yes. people to appreciate a horse, they have to feel like it's also accessible to them, right? right? It can't just be the thing that one person of the population affords. Right. Because that's how you get cut out of the parks, right? Because everybody can right. afford a bike, but not everybody right. can afford a horse. Mm -hmm. But if people have an opportunity to learn and so, ride and yeah. see, so. One of the things that we uh, will tell yeah. you is that we don't, oh, I'm sorry. We don't turn anybody away for um, <coughs> lack of ability to pay, um, and that's you know part of our non-for-profit. Um, so, and we, as I said, while the main part of our program is therapy, we also um, do <coughs> lots of this team building and having different groups, having the football team and those sorts of people out. One of the things that we really focus on at Equine Assisted Therapy is sort of non-traditional to a lot of horse barns, and I'm, I'm not putting any other horse barns down. But for us, even with our therapy riders, it's all about the bond of the horse and the rider before they ever even ride. So a lot of times, um, if we have a wait list, we will start our riders off um, in what we call our equine assisted learning, where they're learning communication between people and horses. And um, that's part of what our team building is, is realizing that even though we may not speak the same language, there are so many different ways that we can communicate, talking about body language, talking about um, how we're presenting ourselves to the horse, what, what is the horse saying? And so we go through quite a bit of that in almost every every course that we offer or every group that comes down. Mm -hmm. So we are all about not just riding. You know, if you don't understand that horse on the ground, our philosophy is you probably shouldn't be on his back. Now, I'm not saying that any other barns aren't, you know, 
everybody has their own way. But we, we really focus on that. And we are getting ready to also hopefully start some just Horsemanship 101 classes where mm -hmm. even if they don't want to ride, but they want to come down and learn about horses, they can. Um, and we offer, um, like I said, any type of, we've had Bible groups out, scout groups, football teams, mm -hmm. corporates, and any of those groups who come out for team building get a, um, a, a first, they're, they're first, they're hands on with the horses and they first get a little safety and, and, and bonding um, sort of 101 with the horse before they, before we ever put them out in there. So that is one of our huge focuses is, is allowing people to get hands on and close up with horses as you said, without having to um, to make that big investment. Right. And, and our volunteers love that. You know, we have so many volunteers who, yes, they're there for the kids, but they love horses. And maybe they had horses or, or maybe something happened in their life and right now they can't have horses. And this is a great way for them to come down and be with the horses, again, without having to go out and buy three acres or spend the money for the horse and worry about the, the vet bills and all of that. So. We open our um, our gates <laughs> for for all of that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I just had one comment. Is there a possibility that like a senior program where any of that? So we have that. that. Money? We have we have our silver saddles programs. The programs that we offer on a regular basis are our therapeutic riding programs, and those are for people with physical or mental you know disabilities. Mm -hmm. We offer um, we have a silver saddles program, which is for anybody 55 and older who just wants to learn about horses or to learn to ride horses. And then um, we have our equine assisted learning program, which is a lot about what I was just talking with the team building and learning about horses. And then um, we've always offered a veterans program, but we're kind of changing it up right now just with the new training that we have um, recently gone through for our certifications that uh, we are, are broadening it, opening it up to... I guess my point is there's a city program that maybe could provide funding. Mm -hmm. Oh! Whether or not... Yeah. Yeah. Yes! Yeah. <laughs> we're not we are all about that! <laughs> I, 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 so, yes. I hear you, but I don't know if that's a possibility. It seems like this would possibly I'm be... Gonna look at, I'm going to look at Joe for the CDBG funding for senior programming as far as limitations on it. I can find out more about the Silver Saddles program. We'll contact St. Louis County, which administers the distribution yes. of the mm -hmm. federal funds. Yeah, and that, that is one thing that we just recently learned about, too, is we um, have gone on to St. Louis County's uh, websites to find out what are our community needs and, and how our program might fit into those community needs. And we can do that with the City of Wildwood, obviously, as well. Um, but what are our community, community needs and, and what parts of those needs can equines help with? and looking for, for grants um, in a new way. We have not done that before. We've, we've um, recently reached out to more medically based um, uh, grant and sponsorship programs, but uh, this is something that we are focusing on as well. We have things where you can adopt a horse. We have things where you can contribute to a future plan for uh, capital investment to a new, a second covered arena for us. Mm -hmm. We just have one. Mm -hmm. We always have a waiting list in all of our programs. We mm -hmm. can only give everyone one hour a week of our time. Mm -hmm. So we definitely can talk to you about funding. Yes. In other ways, we have one fundraiser we do a year. And we wait and uh, just depend on the generosity of individuals and grants, you know, foundations, corporate sponsorship for, mm -hmm. for what the other mm -hmm. funds that we need. But, you know, feeding the horses, mm -hmm. providing the, paying the bills. Yeah. Paying the bills, that's paying the bills. expensive. Right. Our majority <laughs> yes. of people, what we have is a very <laughs> tiny, Staff, most of our people are part time, mm -hmm. and um, I mean, I think there's just there's less than a handful of us. Everybody else is volunteers, mm -hmm. and we have people who come in every day of the week to help us mm -hmm. because they know the need is so great. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Wonderful. So we invite y'all to come down, and we'd love to have the city come down and do a team building. Yeah. Yeah. And I'd love to have you stay at, for our next speaker oh, yeah. because yes, you know, the yes. budget oh, kind I of interesting. It kind of feeds into the question you yeah, have, but what really can we do to have more activity? Sure. Can we take just a moment? Missy had one little question. Oh, I wonder I if you have a schedule that they could put up um, on the website for training for volunteers. Is there yes. a regular, is there a monthly thing? Every other month we okay. do I, I, I think that's training. what needs to go mm -hmm. up and, get, and needs to be distributed to people because I'm sure they don't know. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that, would be, that way you get more people involved but if they have those dates mm -hmm. um, in their hands, they can plan around it. Yes, right. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah, so we do, we, um, we, every other month we try to do a hands-on training um, to just get started in our program. You can fill out a volunteer application and we actually have a video that they can watch, but um, as they grow within our program or if they choose to, um, we still, uh, we also offer hands-on and we actually encourage them if they came in at a time to volunteer where we're, for example, right now our next training is uh, January 26th. We'll go ahead and, and, and have them watch the video and, and get them volunteering, but then we ask that they come back for at least one hands-on training hands -on a year. Training. Well, I really appreciate yeah, all Yeah, thank this. you for really having us. I appreciate having you here. I guess my, my first request would be to pass along information on sure. Julian so that we can work as a team to figure out how do we best communicate all of this information to our residents yes. with you and for you. And then we need to start looking at, we've kind of got our event calendar for 2020 already scheduled, but that yes. doesn't mean we couldn't throw something in there. Right. Um, so be thinking about what kind of a public event might be able to be um, held here in town center around either some of our existing events. Mm -hmm. um, where you all feel comfortable and um, right. One of the things I, I do understand what you're saying yeah. about you. You can't bring a calm horse into a crowd of right. crazy kids <laughs> and keep yeah. it calm. It One of the things happen. that we used to do as a fundraiser, and then we realized, you know, just as a nonprofit, looking at what fundraisers in the past have made what types of brought in what sort of revenues for us, and so we've kind of gone to our annual hoedown, but. We used to do, and I think we were one of the only equestrian um, uh, centers that did this, but we used to do a fundraiser over at um, Greensfelder called a poker run, which mm -hmm. a lot of um, horse people are know about. And mm -hmm. so it's kind of an obstacle course playing mm -hmm. cards on the back of a horse. and. Yeah. Um, it just got to the point where we, it was costing us a lot of money to put it on, yeah. and it was not one of our larger fundraisers. Mm -hmm. And, um, but something like that, I think, you know, if we, if all of the equestrian groups came together and we offered that as a, as a citywide, maybe, sort of event. That is, I think, one of the things that makes it dicey. Mm -hmm. Because there's so many equine communities. We've got hunter jumper barns. They generally are not going to ride at Queen's they're, Belt they're because they're bubble not. wrapping those horses so that they don't have to invite stool. <laughs> um, um, there are the dressage people. Some will, some won't. Um, we come from the eventing community. They will. <laughs> so I think the hardest thing to get the community to connect is to find out what the common denominator is mm -hmm. for the entire community. Mm -hmm. um, who is one of them? <laughs> a is the other. Um, horses, obviously, mm -hmm. and probably a vet. Um, the last thing would be tack. And mm -hmm. so, um, you know, that ties into our idea. Yeah, and if I can get you to just hold that All thought, right. we'll okay. circle back yeah. to that, because yeah. I want to have she Dr. Robson. first if she wants. I'm in no rush, so. Yeah, we, but I have an idea about it all too, so we're actually, let's everybody else have it. Thank you for having us. Yes, 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 we'll bring these over to you. Thank you very much for having us and opening this discussion. We're very grateful. I just need two more. Here, here, you can have all of these. That's okay, somebody else might want them too. I just. Oh, actually, these are the right. <laughs> Thank you. You're going to hang out, right? Thank you. Yeah, we're listening. Come on up. Come on up. You want to go first? I'm happy to wait. Well, you I, whatever you flip a coin. I'm <laughs> <happy to wait. laughs> okay. It was tax store and whatever. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> so I'll, I'll talk very. <laughs> so. Okay. Um, what are the things? One of the things that I wanted to mention is uh, kind of tying in what you had spoken about is one of the things that what was brought up at the council meeting last night is exactly the fact that we do have a lot of hiking and um, bike events and things like that that would be nice to have an equestrian one and um, that kind of ties into um, Dr. Stu Robson who's here from Fox Creek Veterinarian Service which is another great asset that we have here in Wildwood um, on the <laughs> oh, I am addressing back and forth, but on the west side of 109, <laughs> where the horsey people are, and uh, he does more than equestrian veterinary services, but it's a full-service veterinary practice. But um, 
I'm hopeful that by the time you know all the speakers speak tonight, we'll have some good ideas about maybe what we could consider putting on the calendar for 2020 and and bring in the um, equestrian community into the everyday life and flow of Wildwood. So, yeah, and I just want to say something really quick. Sure. Equine assisted therapy is awesome. I, do you guys has anybody seen what that is? Mm -hmm. Because it is it, it. I'm a visual person, so. Yeah. It, you know, just tell that story. It's really cool to see how awesome that is because you cannot replace that therapy. It, mm -hmm. And and I've seen it as a veterinarian more on on the sidelines and and being a count, uh, a member on a board. But the but the impact on those kids is huge. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, and it's a passionate community. They have a lot of volunteers and. Um, it, you. Kudos to you guys Thank because you. it's it's really cool what they do on a day to day basis. Mm -hmm. I've seen some miracles happened for kids um, and adults. And adults. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it, yeah, you just can't I'm not, not going to steal your thunder, but if you go to our Facebook page, we post quite, we try weekly to post an, a miracle each yeah, week. I, and we've actually recently partnered with um, Manapro and Spirit Force International, which is one of the organizations that um, certifies us. It's, it's, it, it, we're not just people that are horse crazy putting kids on horses. There's a lot that goes into it. <laughs> and a lot of certification and training that goes into it. But at any rate, if you look on our Facebook page, you will uh, see lots of miracles, so thank yeah, you. Yeah, so I hope you can tell that story loud because it's cool It's cool to thank see, you. you know, just on the, on so simplistically, just that vision of the kid on the horse and the people, you know, around helping, and it's, it's just really neat to, to see that therapy. So Thank that's you. a great asset for the city, and, mm -hmm. and it needs to be told more because a lot of people probably don't even really understand what hypnotherapy is yeah. and the impact and, you know, kind of what, what that can do for people. So that's awesome. But um, so I'll talk really fast to be respectful of everybody's time, but I am a veterinarian, and um, I do want to say I really and passionate about this city. I love Wildwood. Um, I used to live in Pacific and I moved into the city purposefully and, and we uh, bought raw ground in the city and built a business in 2000, uh, 2006 we moved in and um, worked a lot with Joe Boonich and the city and just had a wonderful experience. I mean, Joe and I were on a first name basis for a long time and, and, and have great memories, believe it or not, of that whole process, really kind of fun. And, and we have been so blessed and the, the city has supported us in so many different ways. And Julian came out and, and met with us and uh, it's just a, we have such a great city. I, I don't know how many people realize the asset that we have here is really awesome. There's just not a lot of places that you can live and have a horse and be in a town center and ha it's just, we have like the best of all worlds in the city yes. so it is awesome place to live so um, but uh, so I'm a resident and a business owner um, and um, and you have a beautiful facility oh you? thanks yes, yeah, you do. My, <laughs> my dad was an architect he's passed away uh, but he uh, he designed the building so it was a father-son thing and we built it together and Joe was part of that a lot a big part of that so uh, but um, so I'm married to the city in many different ways, so, but in a, in a good way. I, I love it here. Um, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Um, there's a, there, there's a, a couple ideas that just bounce around in my head, and, and when Cheryl asked me to come, I, I just wanted to express those, and, and I'll just lay them out there, and, and if they're good ideas or not, I, I don't know. But, you know, um, the, uh, as far as the community, I think we're missing, there's a couple different pieces that I think that we're not connecting together. Um, one is we have wonderful, like awesome green space in the city and, and trails. And I have been on, I promise you I've been on every single one of those trails. I love our parks. Our parks are amazing. Um, I pulled it up on my iPad. There's more parks here than you realize. I mean, there's Bluffview and there's Zombie and there's Greensville, there's Rockwoods Reservation, there's there's uh, Babbler, they're, they're everywhere. And that's within minutes of right here. Um, so, and a lot of those trails do not get used very much. I mean, they just don't. Um, and I know you're right, and this is because a lot of the horse people, because of the di different disciplines, they, they just don't share in that trail use. Um, However, if we want to do something that 
as a community, I mean, if we want to reach out to people like Lauren who doesn't have a horse, yeah, you it. could easily have a really fun event that you could put on at one of our fantastic parks and you could pick Greensboro or Babbler, wherever you wanted to choose, but um, you could We would easily. host it. <laughs> yeah, well, so we used to do a poker run. Yeah. Um, we, we did a poker, we started a poker run for uh, MERS and we did it as a fundraiser. Yes. Um, we raised, uh, I think the last year that we did it, we and we turned it over to them, but um, I think we raised a deep grand, which, which is probably not very much for you guys, but it, it's, it's something, and it was fun. I mean, we had a great time, yeah. but you could easily... Can you tell them real quickly for the yeah. being non equestrians what exactly a poker run is? So, <laughs> so a poker run is basically an event where it's really fun. So okay. you, you basically, um, and I hope I get this right because um, it's been a while since we did this, but basically you have a deck of, or you go to different stations throughout the park and you have to do like a certain thing on your horse. Like yeah. you have to. Um, pa pass your horse to a little obstacle course or something, mm -hmm. or back your horse into a little area that mm -hmm. is that's roped off on it, and do a, a an e you know relatively. You need easy. to go fish for beginners, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but for beginners like you, I'll, I'll share and what I think you could do. But the poker run, you get a card at each station. Whoever has the best hand at the end of the poker run then wins a prize. And we did a silent auction and some other stuff at the, at the Beulah shelter. Or I can't remember what Mustang shelter I think it was. But um, however, not everybody's going to do that, right? You're probably you're not probably not going to come and ride your horse in the poker run. But I think that it could, you could easily do some other event like that where if. Um, it, it could be more family oriented because you could have a chuck wagon cookout, you know, pancake thing, and then the poker run is part of that. You could have a fan. I think you need to include the family. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. um, I've got a lot of kids, so mm -hmm. it, and and to to back up a step. I mean, if it, the the reason that I became a veterinarian is because I went to camp and I got to ride horses at camp. My parents they couldn't they didn't want to buy me a horse because it was expensive. So I rode every horse at camp every minute of every day that I could and I loved it and that's why I became a veterinarian but at camp we did fun stuff on horses you know we, we did trail riding we did you know we had a really fun every summer we'd have like a big um, rodeo but it was like you know you put the flag and the the sand thing on top of the thing or you ride your horse down at the end of the arena and drink a coke and then get back on your horse and ride back which is fun stuff you know so it seems like a lot of the equine stuff that we do, we take in the fun out of it, it seems like. Well, and, you know, that's why it's all about horses. the footing. It's all and, about the know. footing, or oh it, we make it so competitive that, mm -hmm. you know, it's it, we ruin it. And that's why I think it's it's been hard for kids or families to get into equine stuff because it's just so darn competitive. But that could be easily fixed with just a really fun event. You could have a rodeo day. You could have a poker run. You could have a... A pink chuck wagon, you know. Pacific thing. does a rodeo, don't they? Yeah, you yeah. can make it fun. You, can, you, can, you know, and it, it take the competitiveness out of it and make it more family oriented. Everybody, you know, has fun, and you, you know, it, it, you can make the events. You know, you, even if you don't have a horse, maybe you can do bobbing for apples and different things. But you make it a community event that Wildwood could share in, and it could show off our parks. Mm -hmm. um, it could show off. Um, you know, you can make it a family event. So if you don't have a horse, you still come because you put your, you get your cowboy on, you put your boots on, you get your straw hat or whatever, you know, you can come and they'll have a little, you could have a, a bonfire and a, I mean, you know, so I think you can really make it fun and you could involve the community. You can make it a citywide event. And, and by the way, you could just make it a fundraiser for somebody like, you know, but you know, you could easily just, and because it, it requires a lot of work and you need a lot of volunteers, so mm -hmm. they would have a lot of volunteers, a lot of work. Now, we don't want to shoulder them with all of this, but um, you know, there it, it could because it does take a lot of work to do these things. But the, but the purpose wouldn't be necessarily like the, um, the the it would be a community event. So it would be a success if we show off the parks that a lot of people unfortunately just miss. They just miss. They go to Starbucks and then they go to Deerberg's and then they go home and they just have no idea how beautiful these parks are around here. So I think that, you know, if you can get people in the parks and do a family fun event 
and you really promote it well, which I don't think would be very hard at all, do it in the fall or something, or you know, when it's when it's nice. I think it could be a lot, a lot of fun. I think that if you, for as far as you guys, I think if you did that, instead of promoting yourself at your facility, I think if you do it at a park, and by the way, hey, we're we're here, and, and you you set up a booth, and mm -hmm. you know, and you know, then it might make it a little bit more fun to come. Whereas, if it's an open house for you guys, which is great, I mean, if you're somebody like me who's passionate about horses, I'm probably going to come. But the general <coughs> public is well, probably just, they may or may not come for that. But if it's a chuck wagon thing or something, that's a, like fun. I got kids. I want to bring the kids and go do that. You know, type thing. So. Well, thanks yeah, for that's my thoughts. Views. Yeah, I love really the great. idea of a rodeo. I mean, a wildwood rodeo. Oh, How fun so would fun. that be? That oh, would just be. That's amazing. the stuff I did. With, you know, we had the. Yes. All, I can tell we you all the events. I remember it like it was yesterday. We have to look at the logistics and. Yeah. By rodeo, what he he doesn't mean to yeah. come out and you know. And, more like riding bulls and stuff yeah. like that, right? Yeah. But it's like fun, Jumana, silly stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Where there's little games like you ride with the egg on a spoon or something. Yeah, like that. it's safe. You know? It's like, more that than yeah. like, right. like it's bucking. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We don't have to do that. We're looking at the barrel <laughs> racing. But, <laughs> you know, oh, just, just, I, I love the family idea. And um, yeah, we would we would be all over that. Yeah. and, and you know, it's not going to be well attended the first year. You have to, you have to come you have in. To work into you it. have to you promote work it. You have to promote it. And maybe what we can do is bring you guys back together at an off-sides meeting and, and discuss this a little bit more. Maybe if you could speak with some of your um, mm -hmm. patients. Maybe if you could speak yes. with some of the uh, individuals that you know. Cheryl, you do the same. And then let's see if we can maybe pull together a, a sub discussion on yeah, and what kind of event we, we could put together. Or um, just even just even going to these parks and having Wildwood say, hey, you know, once a month and, and we're going to switch the parks around, you know, bring your horses out. And mm -hmm. sometimes I think just having a center organizer um, who's willing to, you know, sort of promote it mm -hmm. helps versus just yeah. um, mm -hmm. people I, showing up at a park to ride. Yeah. And I, I think in general terms, I think it really is, I, I really think it is the city, the city's, I'm trying to say this. Just say it. Yeah. Well, I think, it, I think it would behoove the city right. to mm -hmm. promote these things. Mm -hmm. You're, you, it's promoting some beautiful assets that we have that will draw people in. I mean, things like what she's talking about brings a lot of people in the city. Yes. A lot of people from other places that are going to come into our city and realize how great it is here. And, and, um, I, it, I recently it went to a nice. neighborhood a meeting that kind of fits in with what you're saying, Stu. Yeah. And um, it was basically people getting together that had horses, but they didn't know anybody to ride with, right? And so mm -hmm. the whole goal of this, you know, little fun party, right, was to have a sheet of paper of sharing contact information of other questions. So what he's saying about the city facilitating mm -hmm. people to get together and do something fun like that mm -hmm. is relatively, relatively simple. And it doesn't take any money. It really doesn't. Not the stuff I'm talking about. I mean, it might take a little bit, but you know, it's, it's just, it's time and you know, you have to have people who are passionate about it, but um, I'm not talking about budgets and you know, you just, it, I mean, this is open space that we're talking about. You can have these events for very inexpensive. Mm -hmm. It's not like, and people probably will, you know, businesses like myself would probably give to those kind of things, you know, just to make mm -hmm. it good for the community. Have, I mean, it, it's. help offset the cost for the. Like yeah. And we have one more idea that um, Missy was get, yep. maybe is a good Thank time for you to speak in, Thank too. You. I meah. mean, if you can please yeah. stick I've this down around. I've got some ideas. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see if you could just five minutes, okay? Because oh. we do have a long agenda to go Yeah, sorry. No, 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 been great. I, I think, you know, I'm listening to all this. John and I have been in the equestrian community for 30 years. We see the different factions. and. Because we've put on plenty of events, because John's been president of Queenie Park Equestrian Events, and we put on the horse trials. Mm -hmm. It's in Queenie Park. It's a St. Louis County Park. Mm -hmm. uh, we buy and have made and have the courses built, and we pay for all of that. We raised $50,000 to build 
dressage rings and fencing. Mm -hmm. We buy the tractors. Mm -hmm. St. Louis County Parks does not mow. Mm -hmm. We do. Mm -hmm. People don't have any idea. So we know what events, we've done lots of things like hunter paces, mm -hmm. which is a little bit like a poker room without the cards. Mm -hmm. But you basically tie ribbons, or we've had a little problem with the ribbons, so we've been using some spray paint on the grass, but whatever, and they follow that, like Hansel and Gretel, and you don't know the course ahead of time. Mm -hmm. And then they come up with an optimal time, and then you are placed that way, mm -hmm. and there are hilltoppers, and there are jumper divisions, and mm -hmm. that's fun. And we did a chili cook-off, so we just did one two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. We had 83 riders. That was great mm -hmm. for November. That's awesome. Um, but we've lot, the problem was we have lots of events that we couldn't have weather did not cooperate mm -hmm. all spring and summer. Mm -hmm. So we lost a lot of opportunities to make money. Mm -hmm. So a few years ago, we asked Wildwood for permission to have a tax swap mm -hmm. on top of the garage. Mm -hmm. um, and that was the best idea I could come up with mm -hmm. to tie all the communities together mm -hmm. because we are all very different. Mm -hmm. And you can have an event like he's talking about, but I promise you, it's not going to tie everybody together. There are people that just are not going to put their horse on a trailer mm -hmm. and go ride it on uneven footing mm -hmm. and have a chance for something to happen. It mm -hmm. just probably will not happen. Mm -hmm. um, however, that being said, we all have to clean out our tax. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't cost any money, really, because you all could sponsor it. We were trying to do it as a, a money maker for us mm -hmm and a money maker for whoever wanted to participate as well. So what we did was we charged people $25 for a place to park their truck or car mm -hmm. and get a second parking spot if they wanted to set up a table. And this is from the first uh, tax swap in 2015. So this was our first effort. Um, and if you all wanted to do it, you wouldn't have to charge that much. You could say, we're going to charge you $5 to register. If you want more parking spots, it's $5 a parking spot. And all that money is going to go to an organization like theirs. Mm -hmm. um, and then and maybe then they bring there. their old tag mm -hmm. and, um, to sell it. Mm -hmm. And then what we did was gave everybody a trash bag as they came in and said, and when you're finished, police your spot and take that over and put it in the trash can. Mm -hmm. We, the second year, a friend of mine, um, her husband is a manager for Pappy's, so they provided food, um, so we had con some concessions, and then I hired my cousin to sing, and um, that actually turned out pretty good. And we also um, got Apple Jack, who's a little therapy, miniature horse who wears the red sneakers mm -hmm. to come and there were photo opportunities with the horse. Mm -hmm. um, that one, it, we got lucky both times. We had good weather. Um, people did sell stuff and we, it was our first attempt to do this. We made um, maybe $650 after we paid for, because anything that Queenie Park does, we have to pay for insurance. Mm -hmm and um, you know the other little incidentals that we needed. There's a lady who um, brought her wheelbarrow and that's all the stuff she bought. She took it home and came back with it and got a second load. <laughs> um, but it was great fun. Um, we had a little bit of everything. I think Pew, that was mine, was trying to sell some saddles. Mm -hmm. Saddles are too expensive and people don't want to buy saddles without their horse there. Um, so, no, they didn't do too well, but I did really well on the boots. Um, there's some more people, you know, it turned out to be a great social kind of thing. Uh, so it, was, it really was a fun event. The beauty of Wildwood doing it is that they can do probably a much better job of marketing uh, because you reach a lot more people. We marketed through the Queenie Park equestrian event and our own personal um, Facebook accounts where Wildwood reaches far more people on Facebook. 
So that would be good. I think um, we planned it for the beginning of April because we didn't want it to interfere with anybody's show season, but you all could do it later. The reason why we liked the spot so much was because if the weather was bad, we could go underground um, and do it inside the garage. So there was a little planning there. Uh, but people sold show coats, old boots, uh, old grooming things. A friend of mine makes fancy dog treats. She sold those, a little bit of everything. But it was fun. This kind of an event doesn't cost a lot to put on. Mm -hmm. So it's not a big financial commitment for the community. Mm -hmm. We can make a teeny bit of money and pass it on to a Wildwood um, non-for-profit. Mm -hmm. But when you're trying to engage the hunter-jumper people, the dressage people, the trail riding people, the western people, the saddlebred people, um, Typically, I'm not saying they don't speak to one another, but they they don't run in the same circles. Mm -hmm. um, but we all got tech, mm -hmm. and we all want to sell it. So mm -hmm. this is a this is at least something for you to consider, um, and it's not a lot of money. And if I could just summarize, my thought was I, th I think that's a great way to get. A first time event to have all the sports um, horse owners in an area and at the same time there could be a booth there right where it, it provides information about the not-for-profit but mm -hmm. most importantly where we've also at the same time been planning a fun ride for the kids and the people to come out and meet and enjoy the parks mm -hmm. and it would be an opportunity to publicize it to everyone mm -hmm. well, and right. between the two I think we've covered all the bases and another thing that could be done uh, is someone from your office maybe um, giving some kind of lecture, you know, some like little talk about mm -hmm. bit fitting or, you know, dental things or mm -hmm. equine massage. Or, there are so many things out there that, that are learning opportunities for mm -hmm. our equine community. So there's that piece of it as well. It, there's just, Sarah, can do you I have use? something planned for... 20, 20, 20 we do not. Um, since John got sick, it was, yeah. I just, um, so the gal in the green shirt is my former trainer, so she and I did it. But, but I'd um, love to see us do it in April, right. and at the same time we can be planning in the background to have a fun ride, and we well, can publicize it, it there. it's a good opportunity to tap into, what do y'all think about this? What is something that you all would like to see Wildwood do to um, connect us all? Um, or even versus calling, I mean, tack swap, obviously, when we all, all of us equestrians, when we hear tack, we perk up. We love it. So, um, <laughs> so I love that idea, but even doing something more, I and mean, we've also got the hotel here, like having a, a convention, an equestrian convention right here in Wildwood that would incorporate vet, um, veterinarians, um, tack, and would also incorporate, as she said, there unfortunately is, um, Bad blood isn't right. It's not, no, no it's, it's just that they run in different circles. We run in different circles, a lack of a better word. And so it would be a way to have each one of the disciplines represented in represented in different ways and bring us all together right here within this community. Um, one thing that in the prep past we have shown, we've been involved with horse shows that benefited their view therapeutic horsemanship so they would do a dressage show every year yeah. and all that money went to help therapeutic horsemanship yeah. um, there have been those kinds of things that mm -hmm. certainly lots of charity things mm -hmm. um, so that's the thought too yeah the problem and you guys have given us I, my, my mind's kind of going <laughs> <up>. <laughs> but that's good um, you're thinking yeah. that's okay Go ahead. Okay, so I, so what I'm hearing, I just want to recollect after everything, is there's two separate issues. One, you're looking for something to connect horse owners, by the horse owners, for the horse owners. And then we're also talking about how we connect horse owners to the larger community as a whole, mm -hmm. to bring in everyone so that we can learn and respect and understand each other's needs and appreciate the, my thing's yelling at me that I'm, I'm not walking, I'm sorry, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, here's it now, um, to, to appreciate your community because it's valuable. We want to lean into it because that's why we're different in this city. 
So what I'm, what I'm hearing, especially from Missy, is that one size doesn't fit all, particularly with the horse community. So I think the family, the, the trail thing makes sense. We, we do that, but we have to acknowledge that if we want to teach people about dressage and jumping, 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 good God, jumping, that we might need to go to them, that we might need to go to that facility and co-sponsor an event. So, you know, Jul Julian and the WBA are great resources for connecting owners to owners in the tag shop. The problem is, is I'm not going to come to a tag event to learn anything great about horses unless it's also with something else. So that's really maybe where you need your own horse owners association mm -hmm. and your own social network and then the city can help promote from that. But mm -hmm. you've got, so here's the communities I wrote down. You know, you've got the therapy community, you have the sportsmanship that's very competitive, whether that be polo or special riding, the jumping, the time trials. Then you've got the casual owners that just do this for fun. You like growing up with horses. And then you have the non-owners, the non-owners that may be casually interested like myself. Um, and that's where you can bring in the family. And so the three things I got is you want it to be a destination, you want it to be an experience, and you want it to build community. Did I, what did I miss? Is that about, did I miss anything? Exposure to the park trails, but I think you yeah, covered yeah, that. Yeah, exposure, okay. Yeah. And, and I think just celebrating Wildwood's roots mm -hmm. and just the beautiful assets that we have here. Mm -hmm. and, Absolutely. And it, it's, it's just a great city and all of those things could come together and, and, and you know if, if some effort was put towards that mm -hmm. and people like Lauren who never even has a, 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 you know she may not ever want to ride a horse but she may want to come to I've been last time I fell off it wasn't my fault you know? though it wasn't my fault I got scraped off the side of it it was sassy I couldn't get the gate open everybody who's ever been on one <laughs> I mean, it's not a great cause. Well, yeah. That's a good story. It's yeah. a, a great, I'll share the story some other time. I think what we, we probably need to do from, from this point then is work with Julian um, and let's get together with Cheryl and kind of map out a little bit of an outline of possibilities, et cetera, and then reach back out to you guys after the first of the year so that we can see what can get into our calendar, what can't, um, what kinds of opportunities we have as the city to help promote uh, what you all are doing and what resources we can provide you to do your individual or group activities that you need to do and have been doing, uh, but help publicize those as well. So um, I don't know that we're gonna have all the answers tonight, Right. Um, but um, I really, really appreciate, uh, I know the whole committee does, uh, you coming in and sharing just your experiences, your perspectives, and um, what kinds of things you think the community needs to be seen and get more involved in so that we can find the best methods to communicate back to our citizenry what you all are doing in such amazing ways. Um, that's part of the reason we wanted to get you here tonight well, so that and we, we appreciate your understood time. better we really really appreciate you coming thank you for having us and, and i just i just want to reiterate what you said i mean wildwood this is this is such an amazing place i'm a resident as well mm -hmm. um we moved here for the horse community mm -hmm. and um where else in st louis county right. can you have horses i have 10 acres and yet two and a half miles up the road i've got two grocery stores and yeah. Yeah. talk about something for, for this city to focus on and celebrate i mean it, it's an amazing asset sitting right here that's the, the majority of the reason that everyone tends to move out here or at least when i right. moved out here 20, 26 27 years ago before it was wildwood like almost 30 years ago so thank I'm you for well, acknowledging us and having yeah, us. Yeah, well, thank you for bringing us. We really appreciate you coming. Thank you. Thank and you guys. just stay tuned. I mean, we currently have quite a few things on our plate, but we want to add this into um, our mix on that plate. And really, really appreciate you participating tonight and sharing with yeah. us. Cheryl. And if I may say, um, I feel very passionate about what it is that you know has been discussed. And so, mm -hmm. if um, I would be more than happy to try and facilitate making some of these things go beyond a topic to something that actually happens if I can have some support, know yeah. that there'll be support to, yeah. sure. um, you know, Julian with the social uh, media aspect mm -hmm. and 
Joe, if you'd be willing to at least consider some dates, you know, that could, might work squeezing into the calendar for mm -hmm. maybe something in April for a, a TAC meet and um, something maybe in the fall for use of one of the parks. See if it works and yeah, then we can work from there. Yeah. Does that make Fine. sense? Yeah. Would you all be no, able to? No, that's, yeah. that's fine. Okay. So, Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. Keep this I really appreciate y'all coming in. Sorry, it took so much time. No, we no, appreciate yeah, it. We appreciate you it. haven't had much time in front of us before, it's, so we it's a great it. part of the city, so it's it's good. Yeah. Just, you know, but we appreciate your time. Yes, well, thank, thank you. you so much. Thank you so much for thanks for all you. each of you did. Uh -huh. And thank you, Cheryl, for getting everybody. Yeah, thank you so much. Good job. I really, really appreciate that. Pays the same. But good job. <laughs> Okay, Mr. Bertolino is next. Uh, what a dull subject after all. <laughs> <laughs> trees, dead trees, that's all about. Well, we've had Rick here for an hour and a half waiting for us. Yes. Oh. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 If you, read, if you read it, is it, and we talked before, but we got these 1,300 trees that are dying on us mm -hmm. roughly over the next few years. And uh, it really, actually, in serious, well, talking to some people, uh, and I know the city's love of our trees and so on, uh, could we get the community to support us in some way financially mm -hmm. uh, in the replacement of these trees? Okay. So what I was thinking out loud was, what about if we establish some sort of a donation program or a, um, some sort of support the support the arborist or something mm -hmm. that we ask our citizens to say we better replace roughly not all of them but but a thousand trees mm -hmm. and so on to keep our city uh, the way we like it and would you as a citizen be willing to step up and help the city with that effort uh, and maybe we set some donation level that says, mm -hmm. you know, for a $50 donation, you get, you know, recognized in such a way or so on. Uh, just corollary to that, and that was, that's, the, that's basically, that's the thought, okay? We've got a lot of money we're going to have to pay out in the next few years on the, um, on the ash trees. And if there's some way we can defray some of those costs and get our citizens involved, involved both in awareness that this is going on mm -hmm. and why is this arborist cutting down my tree in front of my, in front of my house? Uh, mm -hmm. and, and secondly, um, just it's being a good, responsible citizen uh, mm -hmm. to, uh, to step up and, and help in this effort. Corollary to that, uh, I happened to be at our Ward 5 meeting. I was at our Ward 5 meeting a few weeks ago. And somebody said, I have an ash tree on my property that's dying, and I'm going to have to take it out. Could the city get me a deal on another tree? Okay. Uh, they would be willing to pay for it, but if mm -hmm. the city could get it, get it for them at a discount of some, some like way. Like a bulk rate? Yeah, a bulk rate of some kind. They would really appreciate that. And I thought, mm -hmm. well, that's another great idea if somebody mm -hmm. wants to improve their own property and we can mm -hmm. help them in some way. But, you know, so that, that was just a second thought. So I wanted to put it out here for your comments and so on. Do you think is it even worth pursuing uh, and or not? And that was basically it. I've got a couple questions. Number number one, logistically, do we have the resources within the city for handling of the intake of donations or funds um, that could be assigned specifically to a program like this? Okay. Just want to make sure we can keep track of the money and that we keep track of where the trees need to go uh, without putting an undue burden on existing city staff. Um, I want to make sure we have the ability to do that. Number two, I, I'd like to come up with some kind of a, um, you know, help keep Wildwood Green marketing kind of program if we're going to do this so that we make it publicly aware for everyone um, and that we put up on the website specifically here's the steps you have to go through um, in order to participate in this um, as a donor and as a replacement request so we, we've got to have some logistics around that Sam and I, I don't want to put an undue burden on staff um, so 
if, if I may, yes. just in the interest of time also. Yeah. Um, if the council, if, if someone would make a motion that we move ahead with some sort of development or program, mm -hmm. I'd be willing to work with Julian and, and, and Rick and staff okay. to come up with a framework that okay. our next meeting or maybe the meeting after that, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. I could present something to you. Perfect. We present to you. Is that all right? Perfect. That would be fine. If someone would want to. Uh, just a second. Is anybody going to? I was going to make a motion. I'll second it. Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Oppose? Abstain. Right, okay. We'll do it. We have a quick we have some wonderful fertilizer for those new trees. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you do. Well, the horse delivered it first. The city garden, we are yeah. um, mm -hmm. ever growing. Sorry. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, we will bring this topic up at our next meeting. Thanks, Rick. Actually, can, I, can you give me a, it's... Till June. Thank you a couple. Yeah. yeah. We'll bring it up in January. I recommend that you have in there a donation text, like a tax donation. Mm -hmm. Is that possible through the mm -hmm. city? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Can they do that? If, if people are donating... Well, not a charity. No, no. I mean, have to, there's a separate have to be set up through really set up a bank yeah. to, to accomplish something like that. Yeah. If we you were just accepting pure donations, Without the tax benefit, we can set up a fund to be able to receive those, but it wouldn't mm -hmm. be a, mm -hmm. it it's wouldn't be a tax benefit to add go mm -hmm. through the foundation. Or, yeah. Or we could partner with a nonprofit and have the donations go through them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something to think about. Something to think about, yeah. Talk, mm -hmm. talk to you. Like, um, the talk group to that we pulled we together we for we the um, gardening and et cetera event. They may be willing to do something along those lines. Okay. But David, it's in your charge. All right. well, you can I'll report I'll back in January. Yeah. I'll uh, dump on the staff and they'll get something done. Yeah. Do I need a motion to kind of spearhead what this equine activity? Do we in the same fashion? It probably would be helpful, yes. If you want to, would if you, like if that would make you feel more comfortable. No, I don't know. I'm just wondering. I'm asking since we're doing that with this. I didn't mm -hmm. know if it was needed. If it's not needed, then mm -hmm. I will no. make the motion for Cheryl to continue communicating with the horse community. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and then Cheryl, why don't you plan on? taking the charge of looking at calendars here in the city. Would you mind doing that? No, with, not at all. With Joe and, or with Julie. I'll get Is back within the same meeting. He does the trees, how's that? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If not sooner. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's fine. And then we can look at calendars of events when we come back. Because we, at our last meeting, discussed the fact that the city's getting tasked with more events and more events. Right, that's kind of why I brought it up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to be cognizant of that, that we don't overburden, <clears throat> or we find alternative ways to have some of these programs move forward that don't actually require all city staff on deck every time. Uh, I think there's some more creative ways we could be doing some of this work. Yeah, I think we need to get something out there for sure mm -hmm. yeah. and make it happen. Yeah. Yep. The next topic is the frequency of our economic development committee meetings. And there's been some question as to whether to have them on a... Yes. Rick and Joe, you are free to go. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. As is anybody else who would, who would like to leave, leave at any time. But um, frequency of our meetings. I'm not for reducing the number of meetings, quite honestly, because I think we're just moving into a role on a lot of things. Um, that have been missing in prior years. Um, now that Julian's had a little bit more experience and understands the city a little bit more, but I know there are some thoughts. Lawrence first and then Dave. I would just say I think that as long as we're, we're working on projects, we need to keep meeting. We have 
I think transition from being just a download committee to a very active committee mm -hmm. and if there's a time of inactivity where we're not planning and doing wonderful things then we could always address that in the future but right now I mean if we're going to communicate about the trees and the equestrian event we've got lawn and garden coming up and we just push the holiday event through then mm -hmm. I'm, I'm really proud of this committee I really mm -hmm. enjoy it um, I think it's a great way to spend an evening and make a difference for our city and I would encourage us not to cut this meeting unless we have a dry spell. Mm -hmm. I agree. David? Yeah, I was going to same thought, and, and um, we can always decide at one meeting, say, mm -hmm. hey, there's just not enough on the next, mm -hmm. the next month, let's, mm -hmm. let's not meet next month. We can always Speaking of, yeah. can I make the motion <laughs> to not have our December meeting the day before or after Christmas? Well, we were going to get to that. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the committee as a whole wants to continue having a monthly meeting. Is that going to be a problem for the city administrator or for the economic development manager? No, I think this is just a follow-up from the conversation that we had last night at the council meeting about uh, mm -hmm. frequency meetings. So I wanted mm -hmm. to make sure this committee, committee had an opportunity to discuss that and, mm -hmm. and make a decision and recommendation. Staff is happy to continue as is. Well, let's look at calendars and if we if we have to flex days of the week or days of the month, um, would that be a terrible problem for everyone? Or we've done that a bit, a bit uh, kind of a bit in the 2020 calendar, uh, just because of holidays, mm -hmm. scheduling of other meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, as you noticed from last night's council calendar, some meetings were stacked. Where yeah. because maybe it's economic development and. Planning at parks or IMPW or on the same evening. Yeah. Um, at least once, if not twice, this year we've, we've done so where we've had that come development at 5 30 mm -hmm. and stack and PMP or something at 7 o'clock thereafter. So it mm -hmm. still gave us an hour, hour and a half for business yeah. mm -hmm. so that individuals that do sit on both committees have the opportunity to kind of vote. Okay. okay. Just want to make sure. Yes, Tim. Can I you're looking at me pretty sternly, so I want to make sure that I've you got my opinions on this whole meeting thing, but I'll save that for another time. I know. Okay. Uh, does anybody want to go through the economic development manager's report, just so we have? You know, there was one other item on next month's meeting date, under perhaps. Oh, okay. I was just going to say that until the very last, but December meeting. I'll make the motion to cancel the meeting. Is that what we're discussing? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, there's the problem is there's nowhere to. I guess we could move that. I don't know that we have a room in December that we can use. Do. Did I read in the attachment that it's traditionally canceled? It was last year. Okay. It was last year because it was on that week. Two yeah. years ago, we had a, a pretty time-sensitive topic with Tough Mudder that was being discussed. Mm -hmm. We had to move the meeting up for that agreement discussion, mm -hmm. uh, but that was an abbreviated meeting just for that one topic. Mm -hmm. I'm okay if we cancel. Is there anyone yeah. who's concerned about it if we do? Is that you're concerned, okay. Tim? No, traditionally, when we get the latter half of December, we try to shut city down as much mm -hmm. as possible anyway mm -hmm. for everybody's benefits particularly members of staff who's yeah, here long staff enough staff doesn't have to do things i need a second oh second <laughs> oh, <sorry. laughs> okay. all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed abstain okay so no december meeting and we will see each other again in january but in the meantime that does not mean that we are not doing things with our questioning activities and our tree activities, we can still mm -hmm. have side discussions on those and move things forward. Okay. Oh, actually. Yes, ma'am. Um, one of the things I was thinking about is, um, since I know Dave has a lot of ideas and you're a great facilitator, is maybe I should have made the motion for both of you to work with the horse community. Would no, you I be th amenable I to include no, Dave? No, I, I think she's saddled with it. Are you the I had to use it again. Are you the Okay. Mark. <laughs> Super job. Okay. But I'm full. Oh my. The humor yeah. of the day. The <laughs> humor of the day. Okay. Four information items. I know we are running a little bit late. Uh, do we want, does anybody have any questions regarding the economic development manager's report? that they want to go over specifically with him? Nope. Okay. 
joke. Everybody knows about the Wildwood WBA holiday event coming up. Unfortunately, I had made out of town arrangements, so I will not be able to participate. And then our, there are two events going on that evening, and everybody is invited to attend both. The WBA event with the city is happening from 3 30 to 7 o'clock on that 7th, and then immediately thereafter, the Chamber's annual holiday party uh, mm -hmm. is occurring as well. So there's two events happening on the same evening. Mm -hmm. And the Lafayette Craft Fair. Mm -hmm. for that. I know. So today. I'm in the wrong place at the wrong time. <laughs> Any other questions on that particular topic? Anything? RFP for the economic impact study at Main Street Extension. The RFP was sent on November 12th. The response was due December 20th. Um, we direct sent it via email to at least five local firms, probably another 10 out-of-state firms. It was placed on the city's website. We also shared it to the websites of the American Planning Association mm -hmm. and the International Economic Development Council. Um, I've heard from several firms that have received it and are working on the responses. Okay, I was gonna ask if there was anyone who had made contact yet. Mm -hmm. It'll be interesting to see what we get back later in December, but that will be a key um, action item for our January meeting, so. Um, I would assume that you would be sharing the responses with the committee before our January meeting so that we can make some intelligent decisions and move forward quickly. Okay. I believe the RFP does identify that the response will be provided to this committee for direction. Yes. Yeah, it does. It does. I just want to make sure we get it in the hands of um, the committee as soon as possible so that they have the time to read through it. Yes. Um, chart out your questions and we can come together as a group in January and make a decision and move forward. Okay. Uh, cultural community. Uh, that's a discussion for the future meeting. It is. I provided some background information. The uh, individual, Dr. Uh, Bert Vandermark, who pr provided the summary um, of their potential program. Uh, couldn't attend today. He's out of town for a holiday in New York, uh, but wanted to provide a summary of at least his idea at this point, just so that the committee can have some time to look over it um, before potentially having Bert come back for a January meeting or if that meeting's full February meeting. Mm -hmm. uh, just to discuss what they had in mind, it's a potential partnership between this individual, Bert Vandermark, who lives in Wildwood and is currently renting private office space at the Miller House. Um, and Sam Ballow, who previously ran the creative writing program for seniors here at City Hall. Um, still does do creative writing programming as well. Um, not looking for any specific action tonight, but wanted to give the committee the opportunity to review what Bert and Sammy had provided, just so that when they do come back at a future meeting, uh, we can have an open discussion about it. Okay. Good talk. And last, um, that's my city t-shirt. Yeah, oh, two seconds, okay. Um, so I was in St. Charles and they gave out some free t-shirts and I was sick for the love my city thing. So anyway, what I was thinking is, you know, we have a lot of city gear that's specific to events and then we have some that just have our logo, but we don't have anything that expresses our core values and sort of what we think our mission is. So here's the, sh the shirt that St. Charles had and they really leaned into they, what they call it being historically awesome and the founding date. And I'm not a graphic designer, but I was just playing around. And so what I did was I did Home Sweet Wildwood. And then um, I thought about what makes us special. So I, I put on the back, you know, I can't really read upside down, but trails, parks, horses, um, so that the big letters stand out. Shops, unfortunately restaurants didn't fit. Events, um, historic places, uh, schools, and then I thought I'd focus on above all else, the best people. So. Um, I think, I don't know if people would buy something like this, but it might be a nice fundraiser to put towards economic development events or um, even have specific businesses put their logo on it. Like you could sell this at your you. shop with we, your... You could sell them in, in our... Yeah, shop. I mean, I, it's, I would buy one. I think it's adorable. <laughs> oh, thanks. It's, um, it's just like, it's not restricted fonts or anything. It's through my the software thing. I, I can pass through my customer. I don't know. If you want to see it, you can see it. Mm -hmm. I mean, just... I'm not married well, to something it, something like that cost? Oh, this is pain in the butt because I have to make one at a time. 
I don't know. I could figure out how to upload it, and then you could buy it. And buy it. I mean, again, it doesn't have to be the design. But what I really liked is that we talked about our values. You know, horses, parks, events. But um, you probably want to use a wildwood ad specialty company to print them. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Marketing is out of Clayton, mm -hmm. so but they're not actually a wildwood. Oh wow. Yeah. They're, Yes, there's, there's several actually a wildwood resident in town. Unfortunately, his business is housed in Ellisville, but it's very close to Wildwood, that does nothing but t-shirts, so. Yeah, there's several very good essentials. It might be cute on a tote bag, even like a, if we sold it at the farmer's market, maybe somebody would buy it and then fill their stuff up at the market. Do you guys I think, think the, the t-shirt's cuter myself. Mm -hmm. okay. Pardon me? Do you use the farmer's market as a way to promote things like they have a booth about the activities and things that Wildwood offers? Mm -hmm. Can you just write it in the summer months? It runs from May through September. May through September. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So a nonprofit could have a booth there. Mm -hmm. Okay. She's taking. Y'all can't have her. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not saying you do it for us. You could do it for you. So, um, definitely. Um, let's see, you put some costing in here for Pillsbury marketing and the cost for t-shirts, et cetera. And Pillsbury is the company we've used in the past mm -hmm. for uh, customizing the t-shirts mm -hmm. and sweaters for most of our recreation events. Mm -hmm. uh, and they could probably them. take something like that and do it a little bit more professionally. Yeah, yeah, sell it at like multiple events. Just something that expresses why we're unique as a city. I, I kind of like it in, as a list of, of words, but maybe just yeah. Is there any interest from the committee to move forward with investigating yeah. moving with this? Do we put it before the council as a whole? Well, I guess my question is from a budgetary standpoint. Do yeah, we do we have the dollars to do it? We, do we have the dollars to do it or not? I think you'd have to make people pay in advance, wouldn't you, or not? There's, well, there's a couple different ways we go about things, historically. But sometimes jackets such as these, shirts, other things, because part of an event that goes on within the city, backpacks, other bags, and whatnot. Now, this would be completely different from mm -hmm. all of that that we've done. Though I know, and I know Mr. Bush is still behind me, and hopefully he'll shake his head up and down yes on this, we have also mm -hmm. sold and offered such th items in the past. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah. It, it's, a, it's a matter of perhaps investigating it further, figuring out a design, perhaps work with the department's mm -hmm. uh, vendors that they currently have worked with in the mm -hmm. past and, and come back with something a little more solid. But, you know, if, it's, if it ends up being budgeted or if it ends up being just a small run or something like that, I, I don't know. So you guys have, we'll have to figure that out when the time comes. Well, it's not like we're talking about giving it away. We're talking about selling it to residents. I know, but so. we've had, we have a habit lately of going ahead uh, okay, and expenditures on unbudgeted items at council. And so now we're, I know. we're trying to doing the same thing. And um, I I, it's a bad trend. Yeah. I, I don't disagree with you, which is why it's coming to this committee first. Then. So let's look at what the overall cost would be if we can send it to an existing vendor and say, can you do a design free of charge? I don't know. Can we do that? Do they do that? And typically, there's a setup charge mm -hmm. just attached with anything beyond <coughs> the vendor that we already use for that. Okay. Well, they okay. already have that in their queue and they would be a charge for that. But if we're doing a custom design, so maybe, maybe it's business sponsor related. Sponsorships would be good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Knock on business doors and have them offset the cost for it, and then we have their name on it. Yes, Mr. Burke. Yeah, okay. I'm thinking that uh, I like the idea. I think it's, it's, it's wonderful. I think, especially getting the businesses to yeah. sponsor it and getting their name out there and so on, mm -hmm. that would be great. Uh, I think it's a good enough idea that I would like to say we make a motion we take it to the council as a miscellaneous item on mm -hmm. the next available agenda mm -hmm. and present it as a embryonic idea mm -hmm. and then if the council says yeah I think we ought to go ahead with this given what we've already talked about in terms of money and so on mm -hmm. and so forth then it gives us free reign to go back and say what's the best approach to, to getting this done. Yeah before we involve all the staff. Yeah I, I appreciate the motion I think we have more than enough work to do with it right here before we do go to council. 
Let's see if we can find sponsors first. Exactly. I would think that. Okay. Yeah. Get, get, the, get the details flushed out and, and so forth. Okay. And take the full mm -hmm. time So motion to explore opportunities. How are we going to do that? Who's going to do that? Yes, Jim. Uh, Chair, Kathy O'Neill does a lot of our graphics, and I think she does a nice job of this evening. So she's willing, Kathy and her, to kind of put her heads together and get something more tangible for you. Thanks for offering her up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know, but we need to do too, Joe. I actually think Kathy enjoys doing that kind of work. It's a little more creative mm -hmm. than just reading my stuff. So, um, <laughs> So if there's not an objection, I'm sure between the two individuals, we could put something together and bring it back to the Okay, let's plan on bringing another design update back in December, or in January, excuse me. Um, but I would also like to discuss how we're gonna get sponsorship and how we go about doing so. Um, and I'm going to look to you, Julian, and say, okay, you've got all these business connections. What method can we use to reach out to help offset those costs and advertise their businesses? I think the same way, I guess in two ways. Um, one of which, when we host Celebrate Wildland in August, the Department of Planning reaches out to all the business owners for sponsorships of the event. Mailings, emails, sponsorships offer certain um, mm -hmm. benefits. Mm -hmm placement on banners and on mm -hmm. website and programs and so on. But that's one avenue. Um, the other option is more so what we've done with the Snowman Search and Passport program. Mm -hmm. In a similar manner, send out an invitation, describe the benefit of their participation, follow up with emails and phone calls. And mm -hmm. um, either way works great for us. Um, I, I think this is something that we, we've already kind of set the standard for with the program we've done so far. Mm -hmm. So they have a better understanding of what we might be asking for. Mm -hmm. So if the committee's interested in doing so, we could take that approach. Okay. Okay. Let's bring back this topic to Jan's, January's meeting, but let's have um, design kind of worked out a little bit better. Um, let's have um, sponsorship worked out a little bit better so that we can hit the ground running in January and in February and start going out for sponsorship. And I'm going to look to you, or here I'm, I'm the chairman, I'm sorry. <laughs> we as the committee are going to look to you. Uh, Julian, I, I think um, in your conversations with our businesses anyway, uh, it's just another question to ask, would you be willing to sponsor this t-shirt? Uh, get your name on it. Do you find any benefit in that? Um, and let's see what we can garner as far as funding for something along those lines. Yes, Joe. Um, this is just a maybe not the director of planning, but uh, from that perspective. But we go out to our businesses quite a bit, and we do it at times when some of the requests are more substantial than others. I actually think we ought to look at the vendors that serve the city that we pay a great deal of money to for those services and say, here's an opportunity to pay back the city. Good Why don't you good sponsor idea. these t-shirts? That's one good, good idea. idea. I kind of like that. I mean, I, 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 I kind of had an existential crisis because on the one hand, I really liked it, and then on the other hand, I thought, do we really need another t-shirt? So, I mean, <laughs> may, maybe I, I would wear it, but I... <laughs> but, uh, yeah, maybe if it's maybe if it is a tote bag or a long sleeve t-shirt or so just I, I, anyway, not important. Well, Lock me in, sorry. The universal to whatever it's intended to be placed upon. Okay. Yeah. Let's yeah. get the design, mm -hmm. and then it's. I would think it could be applicable to many different types of products. Yeah. Coffee mugs. But the kinda. initial run of them to see if we're successful could be sponsored by our vendors. Mm -hmm. you know, Mr. Ensel and I just signed a bunch of checks today, and there's a lot of money going to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. I think it'd be not behoove them to basically show some support back to the city. Yeah, that's not a bad idea. I think to Joe's point, we don't want to burn out our businesses on too many requests. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And with other festivals and snowmen and passports, and you don't want to keep getting on and on and on with too many that you yeah. wear them out and they stop sponsoring other events because yeah. they sponsor 
a t-shirt or something. Mm -hmm. so. No, that makes sense. That makes sense. And I like, I think we all like the idea of going back to vendors. If they're cute enough as a resident, I'd buy one. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know that you need sponsors. I say print them up and sell them. Yeah. <laughs> my my non-existent essay business. business. Like, you know, the guys in the room are going, oh, it's just a dumb t-shirt. <laughs> well, I would just say is I think the t-shirt will look better without all, you know, four or five sponsor names on it, too. That's true. So, I mean, I think it, it'll change the, the meaning of it. Mm -hmm. so. yeah. yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. Bring us, bring us your your thoughts at the next meeting in January. Okay, and let's explore it a little bit further. If we could purchase one, and if somebody was, if it costs us um, four twenty nine a shirt, and we can sell it for twelve, and then we put that money back into the coffers for other events, then so be it. Any other topics for discussion? Move to adjourn. Do we have a second for adjourn? Lauren seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Let's see. Have a good holiday, everybody. Yes, yes. that's good. Happy, Happy birthday. Your friends. You friends. Are you working out? Enjoy. Me? You look like you're starting to get I some guns. Freeman girl. <laughs> <laughs> I do some 12 ounce curls, that's about it. Oh, thank you. Sure. Yep. What's that? That's Kevin's card. Oh, it's Kevin's card. Yep. Thank you.